What you guys got another video here for you on how to choose the right PC case for your build. Now you might think this is pretty easy but there's a lot of things to take into account when you're buying a PC case for your build and we're going to go through all of those uh, things in this video. We'll try and break it down into sections to make it easier for you to choose the right case uh, for your build and some of the things that you need to take into account before you go out and buy a PC case. Okay. So let's go through some of these uh, things in this video. So first off, budget. That is the very first thing you need to look at. Obviously, if you've only got $30 or £30, it's going to restrict what sort of case you can buy. And that may also uh, mean that you're going to have to do without a lot of other premium features, which you may want, i.e. the amount of expansion slots that you've got, uh, power supply shrouds here to cover the power supply. It may not be blacked out inside cable management may be uh, re removed because of the cheapness of the case you may not get um, side view window i.e uh, tempered glass and things like that poorer airflow there might not be enough room for certain size of radiators that may be restricted also and other things like that you need to take into account so before you start rushing out and saying i'm only allowing myself 30 pounds for my case um, then obviously uh, that's going to restrict you quite a lot. Also, it, the overall look, RGB might be a thing for you as well. So you just have to take all this into account before you start going out. And of course, and this will also come down to case compatibility and a lot of other clearance issues that you may run into with certain graphics cards and things like that. Okay, so get your budget right first and then work off of that. Okay, so let's look at the next section, which is form factors, the sizes of the case. Now we're going to be talking about the full size case, which is your full um, ATX, which is a large case. Then we've got the MIDI tower case, which is this one here. This is a MIDI tower case. And then we've got the micro uh, ATX case, and then you've got the mini ITX case. Okay. So this MIDI sort of tower, which is quite common this does fit full size ATX. You need to make sure that it supports ATX because some of them might only support micro ATX and you have to work that out uh, which one it supports for your board. So the board you'd normally buy uh, for the size of the case. So there's no point buying a micro ATX motherboard and then going for a full tower case or buying uh, a mini ITX motherboard and then buying a MIDI case like this. It would look silly because the motherboard would be tiny in here and this is something that the uh, shop built, built PCs are they have smaller motherboards inside there because they don't really care they're trying to cut the cost down and that's what they do so pick the right size case you do also have EATX and uh, stuff like that but this is mainly the four areas which will be your full tower midi tower micro ATX and ITX um, cases okay and I'll show you them on the screen as you can see there that's the sizes that you'll be looking at OK, so let's talk about the most common motherboards and you've got EATX, which I mentioned earlier, which is your extended ATX. Now that would need a full tower case because it won't fit in here. This MIDI tower case, it won't fit. So you need an EATX uh, motherboard with a full tower case that supports EATX motherboards. OK, and that's important. Then you've got ATX, which is your standard ATX size, which is this size here. And that will fit into full tower cases and also into some MIDI tower cases like this one. It will go all the way down to the bottom. You can also put micro ATX in here as well, uh, and which will make it slightly shorter, but I just think that doesn't look right. And again, next thing is your micro ATX. Now, some of the micro ATX motherboards on the market, they will fit in this MIDI tower case, and they will also fit in full tower cases, but it will just look absolutely ridiculous. But again, if you're buying a micro ATX motherboard, you'd normally go with a micro ATX uh, case and it will fit in there just nicely. Now, obviously you won't be able to get an EATX motherboard into a micro ATX case because it won't fit. You won't get an ATX motherboard in some micro ATX uh, cases because they just don't fit in there. And that's why they have categories for each motherboard and cases. So they just normally go together, okay? So the ones you might run into trouble with is EATX. So you need to make sure that supports EATX. Uh, motherboards again mini itx uh, again mini itx will fit inside here if it supports mini itx but you're not going to do that because it will look absolutely stupid having a little motherboard in here but again 
if you bought the right size case it will fit in there look lovely in there and I'll show you those on the screen right now you should be able to see all the sizes there uh, with the motherboards and the differences there okay so next up it's the most important one in my personal opinion which is the clearance and compatibility issues that you may be running into when you buy a case and you don't do your research so remember take your time and don't just go and buy something uh, you know off the cuff and just think yep that'll do uh, and then you're going to run into problems okay you need to check a few areas and we'll go through this so first off is your graphics card length make sure when you're buying your case that the graphics card length is going to fit inside here okay now the older cases used to have some sort of metal structure here with the caddy here and this can run into difficulties with cases thankfully nowadays they've opened this area up and they've put a lot of this around the back of the case but you still need to take note of the restrictions with graphics card length so this is especially uh, so for smaller cases you know when you're working in really refined like ITX builds and stuff like that you need to measure uh, the length and make sure it fits sometimes you can run right up to the very edge you've seen me make builds before with smaller builds and it's very very tight and this is because I've measured it and made sure that it fits so the graphics card and its length is very important okay so next up is the uh, air CPU cooler which is the cooler this cooler now if you're putting custom coolers on this is another big area where people make mistakes okay so thankfully when you build a PC if you're using the stock cooler like this you should be running into no problems whatsoever you should be able to just install this and away you go but if you're putting something hefty in something like the one I did uh, the other day which was the Fuma 2 which is quite a big uh, cooler something like this this is quite a big cooler if you're going to be talking about putting this in you need to make sure on a bunch of different things okay and this is the restrictions the height restrictions how far is it going to come out is it going to be hitting the glass or the side panel is it going to start uh, causing trouble with the ram if you've got high profile ram this is another uh, area you need to look into so if you've got this just check the height depth and width of this to make sure it's not going to hit any sort of plastic uh, heat sinks and stuff like that around the outside of the motherboard and also uh, fans and radiator restrictions same thing with liquid cooling radiator sizes this is another big area where people fall foul to because they don't check uh, the sizes now when you buy a, a case you want to make sure that the radiator is going to fit now what some companies do they just put 240 millimeter uh, room to 240 millimeter up the top but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to fit a 240 millimeter radiator up there because sometimes that can cause a problems because obviously as you start putting the radiator up here let me just show you as you start putting the radiator in and of course then you put the fans on there it will then start coming down and uh, causing problems with the motherboard that you're buying so it could be uh, restricting on the actual inside here so you just don't want inside here this is where you might run into problems so make sure you've got enough clearance okay and there's enough length clearance here where there's not going to cause any problems no metal here where the radiator is not going to fit so you need to check this and this is important you can go to the manufacturer's website of the case and these will normally give you the sizes that it will accept and also you want to look for radiator clearance sizes as well it should say water cooling uh, clearance and you need to do that uh, to check okay and it will also tell you the clearance for the front in case you want it down the front here it will tell you the size radiator supported and what fans it supports and how many fans you can have that is important because I see so many people make mistakes and then it doesn't fit okay so the ex next thing is your PSU size and clearance and this is a uh, diff different as well and rotation because let's just say you're keeping this computer on the floor well you're not going to want to have the PSU facing down uh, because it's on the floor so you may want to rotate it around the other way and have it sucking air from inside the case and blowing it out in this case you wouldn't want a, a, a PSU shroud in here because obviously it's going to restrict your airflow now if you are going to put it on the floor then and you are going to face the PSU down 
then it's going to obviously be in with the carpet. It's going to suck all the fluff and all the crap up on the carpet into the case. And you're going to end up with it in there or in your power supply. So just bear that all in mind when you're looking. Also around the back, let me just show you here. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got a good channel in for our cable here. We've also got the cables here. Now you can see this is where the hard drives are sitting. And uh, you can see the amount of cables here. This is a non-modular power supply. And this is another thing you need to look in for because if you've got no if you've got no room inside here, you're going to have to bundle them cables somewhere inside here, and this can cause a lot of uh, airflow restrictions and stuff like that. So bear that in mind when you're buying your PSU, making sure it's a uh, modular. And if you are going down the route of El Cheapo style, where you don't want to go modular and it's going to be one of these, then you have to make sure you've got good clearance. You can see the drive bay is here and if you had a full size uh, PSU in there it's going to struggle so for instance if you've got one of these bigger power supplies which are longer I'll show you you can see here now if you've got a bigger power supply like this and you're trying to fit it inside here uh, you can see how much bigger that is compared to this one and of course what's happening now this is the hard drive cage here it's going to start coming towards there and you won't be able to fit it inside there it's going to be a real tight fit this will actually go in there but then you won't be able to get the cables in it's going to be such a pinch and it's going to make it hard for you okay so just make sure you do your measurements and check what power supply you're ordering and check your parts make sure the compatibility is there and make sure you've got the clearance this is why we're talking about compatibility and clearance it's super important uh, otherwise you're going to run into major problems and once you start running into major problems like that, uh, you know, it's going to make you end up having to go out and buy another uh, power supply and other things like that just to work around uh, that area there, which obviously then bumps up the price of your build. Now, while we're around the back here, I just wanted to talk on cable management as well. This is a cable management area here. As you can see, they've got a nice little area where you can tie your cables around into and they're hidden. Now you have to sometimes pay a little bit extra to get this sort of feature and this is what you want to look for. You want areas where you can put your solid state drives and you've got plenty of room to route your cables around so it's nice and tidy. So you've got a much better airflow and cleaner look inside. So as you can see here on this side here we do have a cable management area which is, allows to hide a lot of the cable in. So that is another thing that you need to look for, okay? These uh, shrouds here that hide the PSU, they also hide a bunch of cables which keep it looking cleaner. Uh, so they're, they're the things you want to look out for when it comes to cable management. Side panels is another thing. Um, you want to make sure that if you're going for a normal side panel or you're going for something with fans on here or glass, it's entirely up to you. So it's going to come down to, uh, you know, uh, aesthetics of the case which you want to go for and also again build quality the cheaper cases might be a bit more flimsier grade steel and if you're looking for something a bit more quality you will have to spend a bit more money another really important part is airflow and um, also fans how many fans can you put in if you want RGB and you want fans intake fans also air restriction look for airflow restriction so yes it might look really nice at the front and of course you might think yeah that's the sort of look I want to go for but is it uh, able to get enough airflow in to get air inside and then also drawing cold air from the outside into the case and you can see here some cases do have abundance of air ducts down here some of them are pretty pretty minimalistic and there's not a lot of airflow from the front and of course you putting the fans in the front means you're just going to restrict a lot of the airflow from the front yeah they do look great uh, sometimes having a hole at the bottom is like acting like a duct in which brings air up inside and then blows it in there's loads of things you need to look out for when it comes to airflow uh, you want to make sure that you've got good airflow inside there now of course if you don't want anything up the top here like this one here, if you're not going to be using a radiator up here, if you're not going to be using a radiator, then you're probably not going to want something like this. And you might want to get something that's not got this uh, vent up the top, unless you want to put some fans up here. So all that comes into account when you're buying 
the right PC case for yourself, okay? So don't go and buy something thinking, yeah, I'll buy that, and then you've got an unsightly gaping hole at the top with no fans in it, and it will look horrible. So just make sure if you're not gonna put anything there, then buy one with uh, solid steel on top here. Okay, so covering the expansion slots area here, does it have enough expansion slots for your needs? Most of them do nowadays, but if it does have enough expansion slots, then that's something you may want to look into. Again, RGB lighting, is RGB lighting something that you want? Again, make sure when you're buying your case that it supports uh, your RGB of your choice. Addressable RGB is much nicer because you can sync it up a lot easier. Again, if you are going for something like that, then you want to check your motherboard, make sure you've got enough RGB headers on the board to run your RGB, okay? Now you can daisy chain these most of the time, but a thing you may run into uh, is when you put a lot of uh, RGB on one header on the board using a splitter, you may run into problems where it won't uh, sync and it won't power on because obviously there's too much voltage going through that header on the board. Normally better quality boards allow you to do this. Some of the cheaper boards uh, don't allow this and you will find you'll run into problems, okay? And some of the older RGB was uh, uh, five volts and some of the more modern stuff is 12 volts. So just check those out. I think it's the four pin and the three pin. There's two different types, okay? And some of them run on three volts and uh, five volts and some of them run on 12 volts. Uh, but yeah, you just need to check all that sort of stuff before you go ahead and buy all your RGB fans. There's no good buying one, two, three, four, five, six RGB fans and then trying to plug them into one header and it doesn't work for you and then you'd get no RGB. You may then need to start thinking about buying uh, other parts to your build, which let me show you here. You may need to start thinking about buying something like this, which is your... Uh, fan header here it's magnetic it sits in here and you can plug all your fans into this and it will work off of this okay so that's another thing so there are your fan options uh, for yourself so make sure you've got plenty of fan options available to you again drive bay options has it got enough drive bay for you uh, here you can see there's only two here but there is some SSD which we can use inside here. But if you do want more mechanical drive space here and there's only two, then obviously this case is not gonna be for you. So you need to look for something that suits your needs, okay? And check your drive bay options, which is available for you. Okay, so I think we've covered just about everything that we possibly need to cover in choosing the right PC uh, case for yourself. And of course, this is pretty in-depth. There's a lot of information here, so you may need to watch it a couple of times just to absorb it all. But it's really important uh, to take your time when uh, picking your case. It's not as simple as just buying a case uh, and making sure, you need to make sure everything is working in harmony with this case and make sure everything fits. Otherwise, you're gonna run into problems and it will cost you a lot of money in the long run. I will even spec out cases for people uh, and, and also parts if people want them. I can do that in the uh, Discord server. So if you need any help with PC parts or anything like that, then pop on there. There's plenty of people in there that are technicians that will help you pick out the right parts for your budget. Other than that, I think we're going to wrap this one up. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. That's basically how you pick the perfect uh, PC case for your build. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.